So I have a passion for information visualization, which means I love taking information, any kind of information, data, numbers, statistics, ideas, words, and turning them into graphics that anyone can understand. Um, and I think what you do is when you visualize information and you design information so that, that something interesting is revealed or so that it tells a story, like Julian was saying, strange and magical and even quite sort of powerfully interesting things start to happen. So I want to show you some of the work that I've done and see what you think. Um, I want to start with billions. Uh, the press every day filled with numbers, 500 billion for this bailout, 6,000 billion for this war. What do these numbers mean? They're literally mind-boggling. They're beyond the, the scope of our imaginations. But they're repeated as self-evident facts, like it's news, but we don't actually understand them. So frustrated by this, I took a load of these billions, I scraped them all together, and I made a visualization out of them. So this is what I call the billion dollar ogram. And here I've scraped these numbers uh, and scaled the boxes according to these amounts. And the colors here represent uh, motivation behind the money. So green is um, spending money, pink is giving money away, and so on. So immediately, by visualizing information this way, you have a different kind of relationship to, to the numbers. You can literally see them. And more interestingly, you can start to see connections and patterns between numbers that would otherwise be scattered across multiple news reports. You'd never see them together. Like, I like this one. American people, incredibly generous, give over $300 billion a year in charity to charity, personally, every year. And you can compare that number with the amount given by the top industrialized nations in foreign aid, just 120 billion for contrast. So you start to be able to see patterns and connections between numbers. I did a similar thing for the UK budget, because I wanted to see the size of this hole in our budget, you know, the budget deficit. Um, slightly less interesting, because it's more kind of localized, but here it is. This is, the, uh, this is our budget deficit, 175 billion pounds. And it's more than we earn from income tax every year, 152 billion. So that's a massive overdraft that gives you a sense of the scale of the problem we're facing. Um, but still, I struggle a little bit because these numbers are, uh, they're still billions, you know, still a little bit in the air. So I thought, is there a way to bring these numbers down to earth a bit? Is there a way of making them relate more to my life and so I can understand them a bit more? So I took the same numbers and I converted them into a metric I think we will be able to relate to. So these are the same numbers. But now it's how much you contribute as an average taxpayer per day. And the thinking here is, you probably don't know what you spend every year, you may not know what you spend every month, but you definitely know how much you spend a day. So in the UK we spend, if you're an average taxpayer, you're contributing nine pounds a day to the NHS. Nine pounds a day? Three pence a day to museums. And uh, two pounds 93 to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Any Scots in? Any Scots in the room? One, good. It's always good to check. It's a bargain. Um, so wherever possible, try and bring the data down to us so we can start to relate to it. These numbers are important to understand, so I want to give, be able to give you a sense of them. So back to this image, and I was thinking about those connections and patterns, and I thought they were really fascinating. So I created a little video, I created a little film just exploring those connections. Let me show you.
you. Oh, thanks. So patterns and connections, that's what information visualization does. Um, OK, I'm going to show you another image, because I love being a data detector, and I love hunting for these patterns in the data, in the information. This next image I'm going to show you, it went out, I did it a couple of years ago, and it went out online. So some of you might know the answer to this. If you know the answer to this next question, don't say, because I want to test, so you see what your minds are like. OK, so I want you to try and guess what this data set might be. Something peaks twice a year, once around about Easter, and then two weeks before Christmas, has little mini peaks every Monday, and then flattens out in the summer. What do you think? Divorces. Oh, you're very close. Traffic sales. What? Chocolate sales. You might want to get some chocolate. Suicide. You might want to kill yourself. Yes. Breakups. The most common breakups. We scraped. 100,000 Facebook status updates. Mysterious pattern was revealed. Uh, mysterious peak around April Fool's Day. Bad joke. <laughs> People rolling out of bad weekends. Um, clearing out before the summer. You want to be young, free, and single in the summer. <laughs> and then the lowest point of the year, don't you see that Christmas Day? <laughs> there you go. So, so much data we're generating. Twitter, Facebook, it's becoming this ocean. But if you can like, come at this ocean with the right kind of question, ask the right right kind of inquiry, it can reveal an answer for you, it can reveal a pattern. Um, I had this question recently, uh, which was, do horoscopes all just say the same thing? That's my suspicion, but I'm not sure. So let's get some evidence. Uh, so I scraped 60,000 um, horoscopes and did a word frequency analysis and created this little chart now, which uses the most common words from all the star signs. So you can decide for yourself, do they just say the same thing? Um, the red words here, though, are unique to each star sign. Um, let's see, uh, Taurians. Any Taurians? Yes. Three, wow, OK. <laughs> well, you're open, but you worry a lot, apparently, according to this. Um, so uh, if you're interested, by the way, if you want to you know, do scrape some horoscopes, you, you get a Russian, uh, sorry, uh, um, somebody from overseas to write you a little script <laughs> who scrapes all this stuff for you uh, and puts it in a file. So I had this um, horoscope and it struck me, okay, I've got the most common words from all the star signs. So that means I can write a prediction that will apply to every single star sign for every single day of the year, right? A, a meta prediction. In this essence, and this is what it is. The most common words across all the star signs makes this prediction. Whatever the situation or secret moment, enjoy everything a lot. <laughs> Fa family and friends matter. Keep making love. The world is life, fun, and energy. Maybe hard or easy. <laughs> but change your mind and a better mood comes along. <laughs> so there you go. And of course, I was just playing with data. I just play around with it. It's a good, it's, it's a kind of material. If you get it together, you can start playing around with it, messing around with it. Um, so I just wanted to quickly tell you about myself, just quickly. Uh, you know, information is beautiful. Maybe I can make my life beautiful. This is my uh, visualized CV. Um, as you can see, I've got a background doing various things, programming, writing as a journalist. I wrote about video games and then uh, about technology. I love technology online, a bit of advertising, but this bit I wanted to draw attention to, this is designing. So I've been designing only for the last four or five years. I've never um, been to design school, never trained as a designer. I just love doing things. I just pick things up and start playing with them. I taught myself. And the interesting thing is, when I started to design, um, I already I discovered something. I already knew how to do it. I was, not that I was immediately good at it, but I had a sense of space and color and typography. And I think it's because I've been exposed to all this media over my career that it's soaked in. It given me a design literacy, in a way. And I don't think I'm, I'm unique. I think this is happening to all of us. I think we're all becoming more design literate, more visually literate. We're looking at the internet every day, uh, visual medium, information and design merged together, and it's training us, in a way, to relate to information in, an, uh, in, an informa in a visual way. And I wonder if there's not something conceptual about this or cognitive. 
Because I think about the eye. The eye is exquisitely sensitive at detecting patterns and shapes and color. This is the language of the eye. Your eyes are always hunting for patterns, always seeing correspondences. And if you combine the language of the eye, color, shape, and pattern, with the language of the mind, which is numbers, ideas, concepts, you can speak two languages simultaneously at the same time. That's what an infographic is. It's the language of the eye and the language of the mind together, both enhancing the other. I'll show you what I mean. This is uh, a little visualization of what's happening currently in the telecoms industry. <laughs> Bit of a clusterfuck. <laughs> uh, everyone's suing everybody else. You've probably seen Samsung, Apple, everybody tearing each other apart. Um, and it's, let me explain something about this image. So the size of the blocks corresponds to the amount of revenue each company gets year per year. And red blocks are companies that are losing revenue year on year, and black blocks are, are companies that are, have increasing revenue year on year. And the little, um, little speech bubbles are the reasons why the others are suing the other. So I can scrape those off. So we're dropping down a layer now. So it's getting a bit more visual. We still see the countries. But now I'm going to drop down right to the language of the eye level, just to the visual level. And so we're down to the pattern. And now, at this level of the pattern, your eye is exquisitely placed to answer two questions. Is there a relationship between increasing litigiousness and, and decreasing revenue? Is there a relationship between the size of company and increasing litigiousness? Now, that's not necessarily correspondence or pattern you might be able to see in a spreadsheet, but you visualize it and it's already speaking to your eye on that level. And then you layer on the concepts and the stories and you've got this multiple layer effect. And this is why, uh, in this field, a lot of people are considering the information visualization as a, as a new kind of camera, a new way of looking at the world, uh, a new way of seeing new sights. Oh, OK, I'm running out of time. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, and like with a camera metaphor, you can zoom up high. So you can take a photo of your data from a, well, it's like a satellite. This is some data I did, a visualization I did for The Guardian. When they were, remember when the BNP was, had this uprising in membership? This was the key areas of BNP membership in the UK. And I was curious, maybe I can get a data set about um, uh, areas of non-white populations. What would be the correspondence between those two things? So I took those two and just overlapped them. And this was the pattern that was revealed. So you see in this pattern um, some predictable areas, like Northwest Yorkshire, where there's been racial tension. But then maybe some unpredictable areas, Eastbourne, Swindon, what's going on there? Um, but also more, you see like a broad pattern uh, of of BNP membership outside areas of non-white populations. So what is that? White flight, people looking in, being scared. Um, so patterns are elucidated. You can see patterns when you start to merge and see data from this level. Um, I recently was asked by the Wellcome Trust to do um, a graphic about drugs. There's some really boring drugs data, so I took this data and I tried to make it interesting. So this is, um, again, top, top, really high up, looking at this data, the biggest drug-using country, using countries in the world, per capita, so per person. So this is a cocaine. <laughs> Top eight countries. Um, this is cannabis. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of Australia on here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Any Australians in? Two, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, MDMA, Australia. Actually, Spain as well. So it's, it seems to be a battle between Australia and Spain. Amphetamines, drifting east a bit. <laughs> Australia clinging on. <laughs> um, then opiates, that's a, sad, that's a sadder picture. Look at that. England, very high in heroin users. Uh, strange correspondence with smokers. And then finally, the drunks. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of data from up high tells a little story. Um, it made me think actually about this other question, it led to another question. Well, what if we legalize drugs? How much would we actually earn if we took into account the sort of hospitalizations and the extra health costs, but also the revenue, the tourist revenue, and so on? So I took all the numbers, I crunched them up, and this is what we came to. So, so visualize this. We've got cannabis would it make 460 million a year? Actually, but c crack, even though it has the least users, would make the most, because the margins are much higher. <laughs> anyway. 
if you add that all up, it comes to five billion pounds total revenue, which is not, you know, it's not a small sum. And by a strange coincidence, actually, if you look around and see what other things cost five billion, it corresponds almost exactly to the shortfall in university funding <laughs> in 2012. I don't know, I'm just, you know, <laughs> extreme times, maybe extreme measures. Um, I am conscious that I'm running out of time, right? But were we going to do questions? Because I could carry on for just... I'll just do a couple more. Is that right? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so, so I was on a pie, but then you can zoom down. These little numbers are really revealing. Sometimes just a little number is, um, is, enough, is enough of a visualization to reveal a story. So this is one I saw recently. Uh, Clay Shirky, a New York academic, wrote this book about cognitive surplus, the idea of all these minds sitting in computers been waiting to be harnessed around the world. Um, and he had this standout statistic, the 200 billion hours it takes um, adults spend watching TV in the US per year, and compare that with the 100 million hours it took to create something as awesome as Wikipedia, so this is down there, it's this big. Um, but, and I thought, wow, that's incredible, it has so much potential. And what was interesting, I often sketch these images before I do them, and this was a sketch I did um, for this. And like the billion dollar thing, when we can't get the billions, mine really doesn't get scale. You see how big I thought 100 million uh, hours was? It's way out of proportion. That made me think, maybe that's used. Because 100 million sounds like a lot of money. When you hear 100 million, you think, yeah, that's a lot of money. So I looked around, I looked across the media, and I said, is there a, trying to find 100 million? And I found this one. Uh, two years ago, President Obama announced the federal budget of America. This is the amount of money that it costs to run the country of America, $3,500 billion. And at the same time, he said, austerity, ooh, really lots of things going on. We're going to cut 100 million at the same time. And people are like, oh, 100 million cut. Yeah, mm, that sounds, yeah, that's good. Let's just look at that. Um, 3,500 billion US federal budget, which is more, by the way, than the GDP of Germany to run the country. It's so rich, that country. So let's go. 3,500 billion US federal budget, and let's cut 100 million. <laughs> yeah, if you can't see it, it's this tiny pixel here. <laughs> this big. Uh, so next time you hear 100 million in the press or the media or anywhere, politicians saying that, have a look around, look behind, you know, something might be going on, basically. They're waving their hands at you, trying to distract you. Anyway, in the end, they decided to cut 33 billion. So um, that's what 33 billion looks like. You can decide for yourself whether that's fair or not. I feel like I'm probably reaching the end. Is that right? Good, so um, I probably had a better sum up than this, but uh, visualization is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.